When the PGA Tour and Live Golf announced their merger, we all knew deep down that the world of golf wouldn't be the same. And not just for the fans or the players, even for the respective tour executives. So what does the future look like for PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan and Live Golf CEO Greg Norman? Stay with us to find out. For the most part, if not all, of the PGA Live controversy, Greg Norman, the CEO of Live Golf, has been painted as the villain in the saga of some sort. From his outrageous claims to the questionable comments during interviews, many believe the PGA and Liv couldn't come to a compromise with him in the picture. Now that the seemingly impossible has happened, you have to wonder where it leaves Norman standing. Word has it that Norman is optimistic that the fledgling league will fail, but it's also possible that the shark is the one packing his belongings. Greg Norman, step aside, there's a new sheriff in town. Now, let's take a step back in time to fully understand. In early 2021, the former pro golfer sold his property in the United States, in Jupiter Island, in preparation for returning to his native Australia. However, before he could make the move down under, he got an offer to become the face of a new golf franchise that would eventually transform the sport, an offer too good to refuse. So he went all in with some big dreams. And then, like a plot twist in a sitcom, along came the infamous Live Golf Tour, sending Norman on yet another house hunting adventure. About two years later, Norman, a World Golf Hall of Fame member, may be looking for a buyer for that new home in Palm Beach Gardens and returning to Australia for good. As the golf world was stunned, June 2023 witnessed the most unexpected merger of the century between the PGA Tour and Live Golf. It was as shocking as finding a unicorn with a hole in one on a mini golf course. What added an extra layer of astonishment was seeing PGA Commissioner Jay Monahan, the master of It'll Never Happen, turn into the bearer of the mind-boggling news. Talk about flipping the script and giving everyone a surprise moment. Clearly, golf's unpredictability extends beyond the fairways and into the realm of jaw-dropping corporate maneuvers. According to recent statements from Greg Norman after the announcement, however, Live will continue to exist as a separate entity. And what makes that so crazy is that there are other reports stating that the breakaway league may not survive beyond 2023. Three. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund invested over $2 billion in the league, led by two-time Open Championship winner Norman. That's a lot, so imagine the shock when federal court records showed that the franchise generated almost no revenue last year. That is pretty disappointing, to say the least, especially with how opinionated dear Norman is. As more information about the transformational deal between the PGA Tour and Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, which owns Live Golf becomes available, Norman, the controversial public face of Live Golf, appears on the outs. After seven weeks of secret negotiations between Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA Tour, and Yasser Al Rumian, the esteemed governor of the kingdom's PIF, the man known as the Great White Shark was cast aside. And it even turns out that Greg Norman had no idea what was going on, nor was he being informed of the deal until minutes before the two sides went public. If Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy feel offended about being kept in the dark, imagine how Norman must feel. But the colluding tours seem to care less. The PGA Tour, the DP World Tour, and Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund issued joint statements that did not mention the controversial Australian. He was also not listed as an initial member of the new board formed for the unified front. His name must have gotten lost in the Bermuda Triangle of golf governance. For months, sources have insisted that the Live CEO had been marginalized by the breakaway circuit, having fulfilled his initial goal of launching the series in 2022 amid massive disruption and chaos in the traditional ecosystem. But if Greg Norman has been cast aside, who's getting the big call-up? You shouldn't be too surprised to hear that when the agreement is finalized, PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan will oversee both the PGA Tour and Live Golf. Oh yeah, Greg Norman does not have the final say on the new venture, including whether any of Liv's concepts are implemented. He also doesn't have a say about whether Liv players like Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson, and Phil Mickelson, who he played major parts in recruiting by the way, 
are reinstated to the PGA Tour. This development also means that Monaghan has the authority to dissolve Liv and to improve the reinstatement of former PGA Tour professionals. Now that's some real power. So what's Greg Norman's function now? Well, given his long-standing disdain for the PGA Tour over the years, the likelihood of him having any role is very slim. It's even more difficult to imagine Monaghan having a spot for him. Well, damn, things really aren't looking up for Norman in this new golf world. Further news on the merger has revealed that the PGA Tour will continue to be known as the PGA Tour, but Commissioner Jay Monaghan will now also oversee Live Golf, while the PGA Tour will remain a partner of the DP World Golf Tour. So what does that mean for Live Golf? It's hard to believe, but there might not even be a Live Golf in a couple of years. Already, Jay Monaghan has informed Al Rumian that Live will be evaluated at the end of the year, meaning that Monaghan has the option to dissolve Liv. It seems that Liv golfers have found themselves in a comical catch-22 situation. If they were to join the new tour, they'll have to seek approval from none other than Monaghan and the current PGA Tour leaders. Now remember that Jay Monaghan already banned them from the PGA since their defection to the breakaway franchise. So it's expected that the penalties before they can return to the tour will be severe. According to the report, the only promise made between PGA Tour and PIF officials is a right to refusal, implying that many unknowns remain. Maine. This detailed report came nearly two days after Norman held a 30-minute conference call with Live Golf staffers to discuss the company's future. Nonetheless, Norman, as usual, took a victory lap soon after the deal was announced. Norman told Live Golf staff that the league is planning for 2024 and beyond. But if there's a team concept in future seasons, it will not be in the breakaway circuit's current form and will not include Norman as CEO and commissioner. Liv is and will remain a standalone enterprise, Norman said during the call before adding, Our business model will remain unchanged. We altered history and we're not going away. Congratulations! You revolutionized golf in less than a year. There will be no operational changes in 2023, 2024, 2025, or beyond. Live is a self-contained entity and will remain so in the future. That comes directly from the top. It all sounds somewhat too confident, but it won't be trademarked Greg Norman if he doesn't sound that way. He just might be living in denial. Despite Norman's assurance that everything will remain normal, a lot of golfers think it's all a fish story. Major champion Justin Rose even commented, saying he'd be more concerned if he was a live player rather than a PGA Tour player. You have to agree, the dude has a point. PGA Tour policy board member Jimmy Dunn, who Monaghan credits as the deal's architect, believes Live Golf did not turn out the way Al Rumian and the PIF expected. The league invested in Team Golf, and its 54-hole no-cut concept was panned by golf purists. With Monaghan having already stated that discussions on whether the team focus circuit will have a place in golf's new global ecosystem will take place in November, following the conclusion of the 2023 season for Live Golf. And once again, things aren't looking up for Norman and the beloved Liv. I'm not going to make any statements or predictions, Monaghan said. However, there is a commitment to make a good faith effort to look at team golf and the role it can play in the future. When Dunn, president of the Seminole Golf Club and member of the PGA Tours Policy Board, reached out to Al Rumian, the man behind Live Golf was eager to speak. Dunn stated that Al Rumian was more concerned with expanding the pie and increasing interest in the game, since the Live didn't turn out as they had hoped. If this is really the end of Live Golf, we can't exactly say the franchise did not leave its mark on the game. This is where Norman can celebrate his victory. Live certainly drew the attention of the PGA Tour, which resulted in more money being pumped into the PGA through several events with a $20 million purse and the player impact program. So, to an extent, he was correct when he told Live employees, you changed golf. Live golfers and Norman, however, have lost all leverage and now Jay Monahan wields absolutely 
absolute power. This might mean a difficult return to the tour for the golfers, but for most who have already cashed in, it won't make a difference. They got what they wanted, a load of cash, so they all joined Live in the first place. With Live Rebels soon to be granted a path to cross tours, it's understood that their current circuit could be reduced to a series of team events interspersed between PGA Tour tournaments. Despite his comments to the contrary, Greg Norman's days at the forefront of world golf appear to be numbered, and we cannot wait to see how this all plays out. Trust us to bring all the juicy details your way.